Good morning. Uh, we're going to uh, do a video here on autism, and uh, I could lump MS, Lou Gehrig's, Parkinson's, all in this syndrome. Um, uh, so we, we want to uh, understand what, uh, what the causative factors are. And unfortunately, this is going to be uh, before we talk about genetics in a sense. But, um, you know, man's a, man is a tropical species. National Geographic did a, um, a show on uh, Articopithecus, which was a female they found in Ethiopia. She was dated back 44 million years ago. Well, they had uh, taken man back to the primates of 22 million years ago, and when they found this walking upright human female dated back 44 million years ago, kind of blew them away. And they brought some archaeologists around there because they couldn't believe a Homo sapien could live in a uh, acrid or desert type climate. And they found back 44 million years ago that Ethiopia was tropical. There's no question that the Homo sapien is more of a primate species, more of a frugivory species. You, uh, in my book, I've had dedicated a chapter uh, to uh, the different species on this planet, the vertebrates in particular the four basic vertebrae. Uh, and I, I, gave, I gave this chapter to two veterinarians because I wanted, uh, I wanted to be as accurate as I could. I knew what I knew about it. And only the female came back and said, could I add beaks to omnivores? <laughs> so I said, sure. So it, I think when you look at the design of the Homo sapien body, you'll see that we're frugivores. And there, there, there's a real important reason for that in, in magnetics and uh, in physics and the types of foods that is essential to maintain the human brain and nervous system. We don't think much about that because man's lost in chemistry, and you know I'm always talking about chemistry is just frequencies, electrical, magnetic energy. So uh, you can go back and you can find where man had migrated into some of these, these uh, colder climates, and man always has these inquiring minds. But by doing that, uh, man had to... Uh, uh, he couldn't just pick and eat. He had to kill uh, animals. He had to dry animals, and he had to uh, store food. And then, of course, we had cellars in the Midwest, and, you know, people canned their food. Well, canning is extreme heat, uh, so you, you're really destroying your food. So man started destroying his food, and little at a time, as we've come down through here with each generation, we've weakened our cells in our body and passed that. Very few people actually uh, ever thought about regeneration before they have offspring. I had a young couple in here several years ago that came in and um, sat down in front of me and said, well, we don't know that we have anything wrong with this, but we don't want to pass our genetics to our children, our genetic weaknesses. And my jaw just about broke dropping on the desk here because I, I generally get the insane. Those people that only have a few days to live and we have to save them and pull them back. So uh, uh, this is important for us to think about. And if you're any age, really, your, your whole focus is cells. The cells are everything. Remember, we've talked in past videos that the human body is simply compromised or comprised of cells. Whether it's muscle, bone, skin, heart, liver, cells, and two fluids. So no matter where you take me in your body, brain, lungs, ovaries, prostate, feet, ankles, it doesn't matter. Cells. All cells with two major fluids flowing around those cells. And the two major fluids, of course, take care of the health of those cells. We have to take care of the health of our cells. And obviously, cells eat and cells go to the bathroom. Cells metabolize and bring in chemistry and use it and then create waste, just like your car brings in chemistry and, and, and exhausts the waste. Factories, they just dump them in the air or in the ocean or water sources. You know, and some people are you know, dumping them in uncanny places. The problem is, is when we create waste, we have to deal with the waste. And your body has to deal with waste from 100 trillion cells. And the mistake of the allopathic community is that these wastes are reabsorbed into the venous system. And as we've talked, it's impossible because of the nature of chemistry. You cannot dump acids in the blood. That's contraire. 
when you eat fruits and vegetables and you breathe the air in a bear in a healthy environments which i don't know where on this planet now you're going to breathe good air because we have global air but if you breathe good air and you eat good fruits and vegetables you're eating 80 percent base or alkaline chemistry to only 20 percent acid that keeps that blood ph at about 7.4 but if we eat the dead animals, the meats and the, and the beans, and we start getting too many nuts, and we start going into the, the cooked foods, and a lot of the cooked foods that are alkaline initially become acidic after you cook them. Uh, so real important. That's very true with dairy products. So uh, important to understand that if you dump acids in the blood, this course throws the blood more in an anionic uh, situation, which is what we've talked about before. Anionic is an acid situation where things coagulate, dry up, red blood cells start sticking to each other. And then you can have blood clots, you can have all these type of things like this. Um, you don't carry oxygen or, or, or iron well in the blood. So all these problems begin when you start breaking this ratio of acid or, uh, and base. And so but we've talked about the importance of how protein has damaged the kidneys and, of course, blamed on colon cancer for generations. So when you add these, these acid diets to the homo sapien after generations and, and cooked foods, humans have not had high electrical magnetic foods to increase his brain and nerve function. And, and, and children raised on raw foods, their intellect can go up as much as 40%. And we've talked about that too on previous videos. So we're, most of the Homo sapiens species around the world have subsisted on foods that are just not foods and, and not for the human being. And so there's a lot about vegetarianism and, and vegetables. We're not herbivores. And on the last video, I talked about a young lady that had MS and that I put her on a fruit diet. Now, this was an advanced MS where she had no movement at all. She was frozen stiff in the prone position. She couldn't even turn her head to say, hi, Robert. So when I put her on fruit in two months, she was able to start moving to sit up, to wheel herself in her chair and to feed herself. And I told you I put her on a vegetable juice, a green drink, and a salad to try to build up her muscles just a little bit because she was so thin. And she quit moving again. And this is very important information for those with autism, those with MS, those with Lou Gehrig's, those with, with Parkinson's. Don't think you're going to overcome this if you don't change your diet and get in a raw food diet, first of all. And you're with the vegetable side of this, you're only going to go so far. You need to kick it up to fruit. Remember in our previous discussions, fruit has 12,000 angstroms of magnetic energy. Vegetables only nine. Vegetable matter has so much cellulose that when you subtract the energy it takes your body to digest it, the yield energy is so is much lower. Fruit is so easy to digest that your, your base yield of magnetic energy is so much higher. And when you're dealing in the nervous system, energy is the key factor. Because without the nervous system, that's like the electrical department. You turn off the light switch, there's nothing going on.